Today we'll be taking a look at some original Atari 2600 controllers. I've got the classic joystick and the paddle controllers. So some of these guys aren't working, some of them just need to be cleaned, so stick around. All right, today we've got the paddle controllers from my Atari 2600. So these are both wired to the same joystick port. So you plug this into left on your 2600, and then you can have two players playing Pong or Breakout or you know whatever other games support the paddles. Um, so <clears throat> this one is right, or this one's left, uh, player one, this one's player two. Player two's got a scratch on it, it came that way, but I guess it makes it easier to tell apart since there's no other way to tell them apart. But uh, the potentiometers in both of them are pretty scratchy. So when you're playing Breakout and you turn it, it kind of jitters across the screen. It uh, just needs some TLC. Also, both of them have something loose floating around inside of them. So let's take them apart and see if we can't figure out what's loose and service the potentiometer, see if we can't make it work just a little bit better. So as for what's loose, it's just chunks of plastic. And I don't know where those would have come from. Well, that's probably not great. Oh, I think it's plastic that was holding the button down. Yeah, I think that's what that was. Well, maybe not. I don't see any broken plastic around it, but oh yeah, right here. So that's where the chunk of plastic came off. It uh, didn't seem to affect anything. It seemed like it still was pushable and usable, so I'm not going to worry about it for now. Um, there's some other chunks of plastic kind of holding it in place, so I think if we get it in there, yeah, I think it seems like it's going to work just okay. So not ideal, but I, I suppose uh, that's what happens when these things are over 40 years old at this point but okay so uh for the potentiometer now there's a couple of ways you can clean them you can totally strip them down um there's also deoxid uh slider and fader uh lubricant and cleaner i don't have any of that i just got deoxid d5 but it serves a lot of the same purpose so i'm just going to hit this with some deoxid right into where the contacts are. And I'm just going to spin it a bunch. I can feel that it's already spinning much more freely, so that's probably just going to do the trick. But we'll have to test it to be sure. Since I don't want to have to take it apart again, I'm just going to hit it with a little more on the inside here. probably clean up the scratchiness no problem all right so let's put this one back together yeah I think that one's gonna be fine without those little pieces of plastic that broke off I'm sure somebody was having a wonderful game of pong we'll say pong and got a little too excited and smashed the button a little too hard I mean, who hasn't broken a controller playing against their brother, right? Uh, I don't have a brother, so I haven't. All right, so that's player one. Feels pretty good. Yeah, player two now feels much stiffer by comparison. And still has broken plastic in it. I'm going to guess it's the exact same piece that broke off. So let's get this one apart. Yes, it's the exact same piece that broke off. So let's shake that out. And then we'll just do the same thing here. We'll apply some deoxid D5 in there. Just turn it. 
work that around. That hard, you can feel that it's moving much more smoothly, so that's a good sign physically. Uh, electrically, we won't know until we plug it in, and then I'll also hit it in the middle here with a little bit. Uh, Deoxid D5 not only removes oxidation, it does provide some lubrication as well, so yeah, this thing is spinning super easily now. So let's get this one back together. Get rid of all the plastic pieces. Looks like player two probably was the little brother and he probably was much more frustrated. Or little sister, or little, you know, non-gendered sibling, or whatever they wanted to be. So, let's screw this all back together. Oh yeah, uh, player two is much looser now than player one, but I think that's probably okay. Well, let's go try them out. See how it works. Oh yeah, look at that. It's like perfectly smooth. Wonderful. All right, well, this one's fixed. Two. So try this one. Oh yeah, this is totally smooth as well. All right, easy enough. That was just me turning it the wrong way. <laughs> Let's just get this guy out of here, and we'll go back to this one. Yep, this works exceedingly well. So if you have an Atari 2600, and you have the paddle controllers, and they're not working. I'll tell you, two screws and a little bit of Deoxid D5, and you'll be back in business. Having fixed the paddle controllers, let's turn our attention now to the joysticks. So I've been using these, these with my 65XE. Uh, this one works pretty well, but this one has an issue where it always thinks it's in the down position. So if I turn on the Atari here, and I've got this one plugged in, you can see that it's always scrolling down. If I push up on it, it does go up. But as soon as I let go, it goes back down. And I don't think I can even find a spot where it's neutral. So it seems like that is something we need to see if we can't fix. So let's get these over to the bench and see what we can do. All right, so let's start with the one that's got the major issue first. So these ones have four screws on the bottom. Let's just take those out. All right, and with the screws out, we can take the top off, and that will expose the board here. So, as you can see, we've got the joystick rocker here, which has these plastic nubs that point down and make contact with these buttons here. So, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to clean this. Let's first figure out which direction down is. So the button is here, and the button goes on the top, like so. Let's bring this fellow. out. Don't want to lose that. So if this is the top here, this one is down. So I don't see any immediate problems with it, but it doesn't mean we can't fix it. So let's get out the multimeter and do some testing and see if we can't figure out where maybe it's connecting. So we'll go to continuity mode. So it is shorted. So that makes sense uh, since it's always being sent the signal. So I don't know if there's no given here anymore or if something got underneath the plastic and it's causing it to give the appearance of always being pressed down. All right, so I suspect then that uh, one of these two traces, this is top, so down should be this one, this one, and this one, and it is. So let's see if anything else is going. No, and if we push this button, these two should be shorted. A little tricky to push this down and get the multimeter. So let me use some clip leads. Make things a little easier. That's so why I push up. Yeah, we can see that it's about uh, somewhere between 
two and 400. Not a direct connection, but pretty low resistance. So then if we were to reconnect that to these two, that's common. Yeah, so the connection there is a dead short. So let's peel back some of this plastic and see if we can't figure out what's going on here. Um, the unfortunate thing is that getting plastic back on is going to be nigh impossible. So I really don't want to cut it, but I don't think we have much choice. So I'm just going to try to remove it around this mechanical switch here. I guess it's not really a switch, but I want to preserve as much of the plastic as I can since I think that's what holds the metal plate in place. So with that pulled out of the way, let's see if we're still getting a dead short between those two leads. So that's common and this one here. And we are. So that means there's a short somewhere that wasn't this button. So now we just need to figure out where that short is coming from. So I'm gonna gently re-adhere this since we know that's not the problem. So I'm really suspecting that the problem here is in the connector. Because I didn't see anything weird on the wire. And unfortunately, these connectors are molded around. So to take them apart to try to fix anything is destructive to the connector. Actually, I do maybe see some damage here. Yeah, I see the sheathing from the cable. Right, right where it goes in the connector, I can actually see the blue wire. So that's maybe where it's damaged then. So maybe I could just cut the end of this connector off and see if I can't isolate that. So maybe if I just pull this blue one away, see if that will go. Yeah, because there is definitely the black wire has exposed copper still. That might actually just be the ground, which would make sense since it's black. But I do see that there is a hole in the sheathing of this blue wire right here and in fact it just disconnected so that's going to be tough to fix since there's not much sticking out here but i think i'm guessing the short will be gone now no still shorting that is surprising blue and black are shorting blue is cut here so that means the short exists somewhere between here and where we can see these wires here. We know they're not supposed to be shorted thanks to the working controller. But they definitely are. Yeah, if I had to guess now, this guess was wrong. And then the second guess about the end of it was wrong. Uh, my new guess is Somewhere up here, and there's a little tiny kink here. Yeah, and so you know when you're playing, you have this facing away from you, and it's typically in front of you, but I think there probably is some string going on in the wire still here. So if that broke through the sheath, that could certainly be an issue. So now the other option is I could just run a wire all the way the length of it down, and then solder that to this connector here. That would be probably the least destructive. It'd be kind of ugly, but I think I might do that. I think that might not be the worst. And I can just hit it with some electrical tape and a few key spots to uh, keep it secure. So now to secure this wire, I'm going to start at this end so that any extra wire can just be pushed up inside of here. Um, I don't know, I am thinking maybe I should just wrap the whole thing so it stays together.
All right, well, that's something. So anyway, I think we're ready to retest these guys. Make sure this one still works and see if we can fix this one and uh, change the aesthetic of it a little bit. That's okay. All right, let's go get the Atari 65 XE and give them a try. All right, so I've got the one that was working plugged back in. Let's fire this up, make sure it still works. Um, I think Centipede's a good test game. All right, so left and right work. Fire works, up works, and down works. All right, so this, this one still continues to work. No problems here, everything looks good. Well, except for that spider that killed me. No worries, let's uh, switch this off, disconnect it, and let's plug in this guy here with this beautiful custom, one of a kind cord. Start it up. All right, come on, hope you work. Ah, yes, good, good, good. So I think we are good to go. Gotta hear you, spider. So anyway, uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be the completion of the repair of the paddles and the joysticks for the Atari 2600. Again, uh, I'm using these on my Atari 65XE, but they're compatible. So no complaints there from the system. So yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this video. So that was how uh, I repaired my Atari 2600 paddles and how I repaired uh, at least this 2600 joystick. So once again, please enjoy the finish of this cable. It looks beautiful. Passable. We'll call it passable. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.